Hello. Welcome to the most, uh, the probably most hardest talk right after lunch, right after you had your wine. So I would appreciate if you not fell asleep. <laughs> uh, okay. Before we start, I have a couple of questions. Who has a commercial background in the room? So either Oracle or SQL Server or something else. Okay, who is new to Postgres? Nobody, okay. So you see the title. Um, how, did, how did it come to that talk? When, when I started with Postgres around 15 years ago, if I had knew all that stuff, it would have saved me a lot of work and troubles. So this gives you maybe some shortcuts um, for getting started efficiently and especially how to deal with the, with the community. Um, I'll skip the marketing stuff. If you want to, do, to know more about DBI, just, just give me a chat. Same for me. Here you have the contact details. So let's dive into the, into the real session. How it started, and that's my personal experience, way back in 2013, I had my first issue with Postgres. So if you're used to work with Oracle or SQL Server or whatever commercial product, what do you do? You log a service request and then you hope for help. That's how it usually works. The good thing with Postgres, everything is public. So this was my first contact with the Postgres community. And you see, I was not even working at the company I'm working now, so that's quite some time ago. What we did, we wanted to migrate from Oracle, a data warehouse system, at that time to PPAS is EDB, the EDB version of Postgres, that's the commercial flavor. You see the Red Hat version 5.8, so it's really a long time ago. And it was slow. It was just not usable at that time. So, what do you need to do when you want to get help with Postgres? My first contact, and I really did something right. Guess what? What's this? This is an email or an email header. And the orange part is called a mailing list. And in this case, it's the mailing list for performance-related issues. Now you might wonder, really, mailing lists? Today, 2023? There are many of them, by the way. So you have the general one for, for the general stuff. You have the performance one. You have the hackers one, where all the development goes through. You have announced and many, many others. So I have a lot of links for you. They are all in the slides. So this is your or one of the entry points into the community. And you will see there are many of them. Maybe even in your local language. I'm not sure if there's a French one. There is. So if you want to have support in your local language, maybe take that one. Have a look. This is the first entry point for you if you face issues, if you were to get in contact. It's all based on mailing lists. So, today, most of the people expect, or at least the developers expect, development to happen on GitHub or GitLab. Not so Postgres. There is actually a GitHub repo which is this one. But if you take a closer look, what is missing here? We don't have those. <laughs> <laughs> so there are no pull requests, there are no merge requests. So this is a pure read-only copy of the uh, Git repository from Postgres. So nothing is really happening here. So why is that? Um, anybody in the room who does not have an email address? Okay, this is all you need to get in touch. Because everything happens, preferable in plain text, over emails. Why? Any ideas? No. <laughs> <laughs> You can search for it in the archives, yes. 
But the main reason is it just works. Yeah. Another reason is that the community is maintaining its own infrastructure. So imagine there would be a decision to move to GitLab, GitHub, whatever, and then in the case of GitHub, Microsoft will close that tomorrow, and then you are stuck. Yeah. This cannot happen if you uh, maintain your own, in, uh, your own infrastructure. You said it, you can browse the archives back to the beginning. Uh, just be careful, what happens to me all the time is, if you go here, take one. The default, I think, is only the last six months or one year. So increase the, the time frame depending on what you are searching for. Everything is public. Huh? You can follow all the discussions. Nothing is hidden except for security. All you need is an email. And want to, when you want to browse and don't have the, the, the whole copy locally on your laptop or computer, you need a browser to search. That's all you need. Hmm? This I already said. And the most important point maybe is there are no dependencies on third parties, so like GitHub, like GitLab, whatever. This is something, you know this name? Please, please go to YouTube and watch this video. Here Greg is explaining how the Linux kernel development works. And that's happening in exactly the same way. It's also not on GitHub, and it's also not on GitLab. It's also working with plain text emails. Have a look, this video is really, really interesting. Again, it's all plain text. You can run it through Google Translate if English is not your native language. At least what comes out should be understandable. Also important, you can take a day, you can take a week to respond. There's no pressure, and it's all based on threads. The community wants to have people who do not speak English natively. That's also important. Huh? Be inclusive to, to all the world. And email is just what you write. Huh? You don't care about your religion, about your skin color, whatever. It's just plain text. That's it. And don't top post. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Any ideas? You have the hint already on the slide. It's all about context. So if you press reply in Microsoft Outlook, for example, what happens? It's top posting. Eh? And if you do that, you cannot follow the discussion. This is the question. This is the answer or the reply to the question. And if you do it like this, you can always follow what is going on in the thread. And if you do top posting, I'm sure, maybe it's Steven, who will tell you, hey, please stop this. <laughs> There's even a Wikipedia page dedicated to posting style, which is this one. Huh? Just give it a few minutes if you don't understand or you are not aware what it is. And I think then it will become clear pretty, pretty quick. So, but I've also done something wrong in that initial case. Guess what? If you read that, shouldn't take too long. So when you come from another database and you want to use Postgres, you should have a look at the data types. And I totally missed that at that time. Everything was created as numeric, and that was really slow. It's improved over the last um, years, but at that time, this was the killer. Hmm. Have a look at them. I mean, you probably all know Postgres. There are many, especially if you come from Oracle. Hmm. If you look at the number types, Oracle has exactly one, and there are many more in Postgres. Have a look at them, and then use the one which fits. And then, no one knew me in the community at that time. It can happen that you get an answer from Tom Lane. And Tom, how do you want to describe him, is one of the core developers. Um, why do I want to show that here? Don't be shy. Yeah? The community is really inclusive. 
So even Tom can give you an answer. We'll try to do that in a commercial world. Will not work. And remember, don't top host, please. So getting to know Postgres, how does it work? First of all, don't do this. Who knows this page? Not many. Please go here, read through it. Especially this one. This can save you a lot of trouble. And it's not so large. And there's always a reason why you not should do it, and there's an explanation. Believe me, that would have saved me a lot of time and troubles. Good, then there's the Postgres Wiki. Before posting performance-related questions. What's happening now? Please have a look here. This page describes you or tells you what you should at least include in your initial email so that you can expect help. So at least the version of Postgres you're using, at least the operating system you're using, maybe the explain plan or whatever issue you have. It's all there. If you read that, maybe you save some work for the community to answer your question because it's already there. But you have to know where it is. Before starting a discussion about hints, this is especially true for people coming from Oracle, please don't do it. You're aware what optimizer hints are in the Oracle world? This is the reason, or these are the reasons, for not doing it. It's not there in Postgres, and it will probably never be there. There is an extension for it but it will not be in core. Take your time and read it, please. <coughs> Same about autonomous transactions. They are not there in Postgres, and there are reasons why they are not there. Which is this one. Again, if you want to have it, please read it. There are also the workarounds in this page but there are reasons. In general, a lot of discussions already took place. Remember, you can search the archives. So before you post something, please have a look. Maybe this discussion already took place. This does not mean that you can restart the discussion, but at least you should be aware of the history. And always remember, answers on the mailing lists at least for you, are free. And there are people on the other side. Be calm, huh? They are doing that maybe in their spare time. Of course, they are employed by somebody, but they are not forced to give you an answer or to help you with your problems. Always remember that. And they are humans. Huh? Don't blame. Be fair. Yeah, that's what I just said. Between... Do you know these logos? Amazon, RDS, I don't know what's the name on Azure and so on. This is not community Postgres. So if you have an issue with these flavors of Postgres, please do not expect to get help on the mailing list. Nobody knows what they did with Postgres. Huh? So if you need professional services, SLAs, for whatever reason, same topic, go to the website. Here are the companies providing professional service. We are in Europe. Maybe search for France. And then pick the company which you trust. So you can have professional services around Postgres if you want to have that. So all this does not mean that things can be improved. When <laughs> this GitLab and GitHub and, and mailing list discussion, this goes back to until, I don't know, and it's still popping up again and again. 
But if you start it again, you also have to provide ways or to prove what you can do better with your proposal. Otherwise, the discussion will just stop again. There are reasons for the implementations. There are also reasons for some limitations of Postgres. And there are expectations, especially from people coming new into the Postgres world. So let's talk about a common expectation. What's wrong with this? <laughs> okay, other databases can do something which Postgres cannot do. Yeah, so what? Because first of all, Postgres is not MySQL, it's not MariaDB, it's not SQL Server or whatever, it's Postgres. Huh? This is the first point you have to accept. It is like it is. And if you put sentences like this, the common answer you will get is... Patch is welcome. Uh, and this is important, so you have to change your mind. Huh? If you work with commercial flavors, you can blame the vendor. If you work with community Postgres, you change roles. So you take the responsibility. Not for the whole project, of course, but you take it, or you have to provide responsibility <coughs> for what you want to do. Hmm? Search for patches welcome in the archives. You will find plenty of mails. Yes, and the reason is Postgres is a real community project. Hmm? Like the Linux kernel, of course, there are commercial flavors around it, but when we talk community Postgres, it's a real community project. And that means that you need to do something or to give something back. We will come back to that point later. And this comes with consequences. Postgres depends on contributions. Contributions are not only C code. Contributions can be to the documentation, conferences like this one, when you can ask the organizers how many time they spend to organize all this, probably during their free time and not during their work time. So it depends on you. You can and you should participate and you should give something back. And these are all contributions. Or running the Postgres infrastructure, web server, or DevRim fighting with the RPMs. Another consequence is there's no roadmap. It's non-commercial, it's all volunteer. There is a link for the roadmap, but if you go there, all you will find are the dates for the next minor releases. That's it. The roadmap is you, you driving the project or the product. So how does, how does it work when you want to bring something in? I've picked this email because I think declarative partitioning was something many people waited for. So Amit at that time, oh sorry, wrote an email. And if you look at that email, It's quite some work for only writing that email, right? without writing a single line of code. But this is how declarative partitioning finally made it into core. Someone described, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to implement it. And then you can follow the discussions and you see, this is quite some discussions. And finally it got committed. But nobody waited for Amit to do that. So Amit and probably a few people in, in the background pushed that forward, and this is how it works. So, but even if there's no roadmap, you, and you see it's again you, you need to do something, you can follow what is currently going on. Either by subscribing to the hackers mailing list, but this will blow your inbox. A few hundred mails per day, Something like that. Much easier is this one. Letizia mentioned that uh, this morning already. Um, so the Postgres development is organized into so-called commit fests. So if you want to see what's currently going on, go to commitfests.postgresql.org, and then you see the one which is open, one is in progress, and all the closed ones. Go here, 
And here you have all the patches people are currently working on. You will see who is working on it, who did or who is doing the review, and who finally committed it. And then the link back to the mailing lists, if you go on a specific patch, this is the email which started it. Go to whole thread, and then you can read the whole history of that specific feature, bug fix, whatever it is. But again, you need to take action. You can follow what is going on, but there's no marketing around it. You have to follow that up yourself or go to conferences. So um, what is always missing, and I think the developers in the room agree with that, is reviewing. Reviewing does not mean you need to review the source code. You could also review the documentation or just download the patch, apply it to the source code, and report back. Yes, yes it's compiling fine. This all helps the final committer and the other reviewers um, in speeding up the process. This is maybe the most important point where you can help. As I said, you don't have to be a C programmer for that. I'm also not doing any C code. You could contribute for the documentation, for example. There's a separate mailing list for that. That's what I did in the past. Documentation is also important. You don't have to be a coder for that. Just contribute there. Here's an example. Documentation, and then again, you know the plus one, minus one game. So if there's more plus than minus, then it's okay, and it gets finally committed. And it was again Tom committing that little change. But this little change helps the others, because the documentation afterwards was more clear about that specific feature. Documentation is important, and I think the Postgres documentation really is good. But there are areas where it can be improved. Why not starting your contribution with the documentation? That's easy. Other ways to contribute. What can you do? This, for example. Volunteer for helping organizing a conference. This also helps the community and is part of the community. This is easy to do. Find your local user group. This is the Swiss one, which is not important here right now, but I'm sure there's one in France. Not sure what it's called. Go find your local group, be part of it, register there, go to the events, talk to the people, get to know each other. Submit talks. I know that's a bit hard to do if you never did it, but trust me, nobody will laugh at you only because you're telling something on stage. That never happens. Just give it a try. Go larger, this is Germany. Go even larger, this is Europe. This year in Prague, by the way. Try it. Submit your ideas. Submit what you did with Postgres. Maybe something failed. That can also be very interesting for the others. Talk about what you do. Volunteer, organizational help, room host, what Stephen is doing right now, sponsoring, all stuff that helps the community. And convince your company, maybe, to give something back. For example, if you replace Oracle with Postgres, there should be enough money around, take part of it, do a donation, do a sponsoring, whatever, that helps, that really helps. Talk about what you do, not to promote yourself, but to promote the project. And yes, um, this is also true. Usually, this requires some spare time. When organizing a conference, usually happens in the evening or on the weekend. I don't know how it's handled here, but at least for Germany and Europe, this requires really, really spare time. If you are willing to do that, do it. People appreciate help. Other ways, uh, you know this one? This is how Postgres is tested. That's the so-called build farm. And here you see many, many machines with many, many 
flavors of Linux or Windows or HP Unix, Solaris, whatever, what you also could do is provide test machines. And you can download the build from client and you will show up here. This is also a contribution. And running a server, a small one, is not so expensive. So final personal tips, subscribe to announce. This is the mailing list, the, the name is um, self-explaining, where all the announcements go out. Announcements could be new Postgres releases, conferences, extensions, whatever. This helps you to get an overview of what is going on. This depends a bit on what you want to follow. For me, this one is very important, follow the committers. There you will get an email for every commit which makes it into Postgres. So you know what's getting fixed, new features, whatever. Really easy, subscribe and you can follow the development of Postgres. Subscribe to bugs. Um, to be honest, um, a lot of what is coming in into bugs are not really bugs, but sometimes there are. And then you will be aware, maybe if you are affected, what you can do, if it's a bug at all, but you see, many, many mails require some time to read them. And nobody reads them all, by the way. Very important, make yourself familiar with Git. Why? Because if you really want to test something, what you can do, so this is the Postgres source code. So now you have the latest commits until, I don't know when what the last one, probably today. And now you can test. Or if, for example, you want to know if Stephen really did something for the community. <laughs> what do you think? Will you see something? <laughs> No, this is, this is how you can test the latest commits. And this is also something which helps. Test them, report back what you found um, to help the final committer in deciding if it's worth the commit or not. And Git is important. So finally, don't be shy. You see the community is very inclusive. Everybody's welcome. Regards Tom Lane, this you will see all over the places. <laughs> But for me, when coming initially out of the Oracle world, I think the most important part, if you're not a pure Postgres shop, is convince your company how open source works. It's more a giving than a taking. So if you consider the commercial world, it's just a flipping of the roles. And as long as the companies do not understand that, it will be hard to grow the project. Try it. I don't know if you know DBI Services, the company I work for. We are not only doing Postgres. There are groups inside the company doing Oracle, SQL Server, whatever stuff. So I really had to convince them as well. From spending money to send me to a conference, all that stuff around Postgres. And I tried to do that with a burger. If you look at that burger, and we are considering this burger to be an open source project. What is the most important part of the burger? Sorry? Beer. beer. Where do you see a beer on the slide? <laughs> the knife, exactly. Why the knife? Exactly. Without the knife, it will fall apart. So the wife, uh, the wife, <laughs> the life, the knife <laughs> is the community. Mm -hmm. Without the knife, it will not work. No matter how tasty it is, it will never look like this. But using a knife requires focus. And the focus in open source always, or if you lose it, it might hurt you, and the focus always is on the technology and on the community but not on marketing or on a single company or whatever. If you lose the community, and this is what currently happens to Oracle, by the way, 
there is an Oracle community, but it's getting older and older, and there are no newcomers, then, you will be, then there will be hard times for you in the future. So take care about your community. It's not about a single company. And finally, again, it depends on you. Without you, a community project cannot work. Last famous words, but this morning I learned we do not do that anymore. If you want to blame someone, you can blame Magnus. Should be around somewhere. Good, that's it from my side. Any questions? So we've got time for a uh, number of questions. If folks have any, any questions. You gotta have some questions. <laughs> I have a question. How do you feel about Postgres as compared to other uh, projects? Have you looked at, uh, you know, how, how are we are we better at being more inclusive than the Linux kernel community, or maybe Django, or other things, or do you, uh, could you give a contrast to another community, maybe? Could you give a contrast to what? A, a contrast between the Postgres community and how we are versus other communities. I'm not so much into the Linux kernel community. I think that the major difference maybe is that the Linux kernel is much, much larger. That's why it's grouped into submodules. Huh? But when I see how many time people in the Postgres community spend in, in organizing events, starting new stuff like Postgres Women, for example, I think that's the, the right way to do it, and that, that keeps it healthy. Not sure if the Linux people are doing the same thing. I don't know. There, thank you. Other qu there you go. Thanks for the talk. Uh, speaking of conferences, do you think we as a community should uh, spend much more time uh, delivering talks uh, on other conferences like uh, developers, uh, I mean uh, C, Python, uh, whatever. Not only focusing more on the Postgres things. Do you mean that people in the community go to other conferences giving talks about? Yes, I think that would help, definitely. In Switzerland, that's already happening at the Django days, something, and people there really appreciate it because most of them know, okay, this is a database, but that's it. And so getting more into the details of Postgres for those people surely helps. Yeah. Do you have a, a favorite feature of Postgres? A favorite feature. I mean, most people would say merge because it's, it's recent. Um, but I think there are plenty of code features. And what I really love are range types, especially in combination with, with timestamps, booking systems, all that stuff. Many hidden features, like um, type tables. Really good stuff you cannot find in other databases. Uh, all the indexes, gingist, rum, whatever. Plenty of stuff to use. I'm still waiting for interval partitioning, by the way partitioning automatically into the future. PG part man. <laughs> and we do still have about 10 minutes for other, other questions, if anybody has any. <laughs> He's very clear, yes. <laughs> do we have any, any, I'm just, now I'm just kind of spitballing, but, uh, what do you think the longest is that it's taken a patch to actually get from proposed to committed? What was the first part of the question? What is? How, how, what's the longest, I mean, it, it might be merge, but what's, <laughs> what? No, 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 it's not. Well, it, it, I mean, it went in and then it can't, can't, can't come back out. But. Do you want me to say encryption? Uh, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> 
No, I'm just thinking about, you know, from the longest period of time from a, a patch being proposed on the mailing list to being actually committed in some form. What is the slowest part of it, you mean? No, what is the, what's, just, what's the longest one? Like, what took the longest time to get in? Ah, I think Merge is probably one of them. I, then the, the one Peter currently is working on, which is part of the encryption stuff. I think it's column en encryption or something. Which came out of these initial discussions somehow, and this this goes back since years. You're, huh? you're talking about column, yeah, column mm -hmm. level encryption, but yeah. that one didn't have. There was, I mean, there's TDE, but that's actually TDE is a separate effort um, from column encryption. Yeah. Those are those are two actually different things that solve different problems. Yeah, but I think the column encryption came out because this TDE went nowhere huh, in the end. TDE is <laughs> still being worked on. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, there's patches on. There's patches from from last month on the mailing list. For, the, for, that have been updated for TDE. Anyway, I actually, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm thinking it's probably something older than that. I don't, I don't happen to know offhand what the answer is, but I feel like it's something we should go figure out. Anyway, I'm just talking now. Sorry, on, on disk. On disk bitmap index. I mean, we. We'll hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, Dever mentions on disk uh, bitmap indexes, um, closer to Oracle uh, than what uh, than block range. Okay. So, at risk of avoiding monopolizing, any other any other questions from anyone? Okay, well, we'll give you a, a few extra minutes back. Um, and uh, thank you again to uh, David. <laughs>